name is Diego, Diego Di Nascenzo. I come from Italy. We are um, one of, uh, a lit, uh, of three persons that composes a little company, Terra. Uh, my colleagues are Marco Leopardi and Roberta Cortella. And uh, we produce more or less only documentaries for TV. It is our job, so our life <laughs> is related to the production of documentary. The story is uh, The Last Dance is about a young man on the verge, a boy on the verge of manhood, and it's kind of his journey into manhood. And he's grown up as a dancer in a religious context, a religious dance, and now he's too old for, for dance. That's how I, he has to make a choice about his adult life. And um, I wanted to know what is it that the child is, is looking for? He must leave the village, he must leave the temple, he must leave his life. He was devoted to a god, he had to dance in honor of God, representing the Devadasi, the lover of the gods. Uh, but now, in this moment, the moment when we arrive to the village, he had to, to, to imagine what to do after, because he must leave the group. And, uh, he loves so much dancing, and uh, it was a privilege for a boy in Orissa to be a Gotipua. And uh, he had to, to imagine what to do, to return in his family, maybe to be a farmer like the father, or, or what? And so one, between a lot of Gotipua, tried to do something different. In this moment, star the, the story starts. Mm -hmm. And why does he not choose to follow his father's work lifestyle? Okay. If uh, you are born in a village, in the huge uh, um, uh, village of India, you have no chance, you have no options. Your religion, your culture, your society, uh, don't allow you to change anything in your life is also a casta problem, you know. Uh, so, if your father is a farmer, you will be a farmer. Stop. Uh, you have to understand that uh, to be a farmer in this kind of uh, village, uh, means uh, to live in a hut, to earn a maximum of three dollars a day, uh, you have anything for the future. You have only you, your strength, your family, nothing more. But uh, his desire was different. His desire war to was to continue to dance. Let's imagine us, me, if uh, now, in this moment, uh, I can't do my work and I have to choose another life. It's quite impossible for me to imagine this. He is a, a boy, so it's more difficult for him to imagine something. So, because uh, the, the current mm -hmm. was just arrived in the village, there, when we arrived there, there was only one TV, an old TV that you can see inside the film, that arrived with a long, long, little wire from the uh, village near Dimirisena. And uh, he saw the Bollywood films there. And so he tried, he thought, maybe I can do, I can dance for movies, for TVs. And uh, he wanted to do. And uh, this is why uh, we arrived in that moment uh, to catch the story of uh, this boy. Uh, and the story, I wasn't sure after I watched the film if it was a scripted story or did it just happen by chance? Okay. This is a big question for us, for who make documentary. And there are, I think, different kind of, uh, different point of view about this. First of all, we have to say that the, the true reality doesn't exist. 
in the moment that we arrive and we want to narrate something. We have our point of view, we put the camera in some places, we choose to shoot or not, and so on. So, the question is, how much we decide for the continuum of the story? How can we manage it? This is a documentary, it's not a fiction movie. Anyway, we, my idea is that uh, we can uh, make possible that something happens. For example, in this field, the boy wanted to try to go to Calcutta, Calcutta. He, has, he had not the money to do it, but it's true that he wanted to do. It's true that his teacher, Jambu, an extraordinary character in my opinion, that was a person not, uh, that didn't study anything, he knows only music, uh, dance and so on, he wanted to help him because uh, Jambu uh, is, was like a, a father for the Gutipuas of the group. So we have Jambu that want to help him, we have the character that to want this, so we pay the bus to arrive in Calcutta and something will happen. Okay, so we help the story that can go, but we don't want to change the story and don't want, uh, first of all, to change the idea of the character. I can make an example, a clear example. If you watch the film, there are some discussion between the character. Uh, for example, they go, Biswajit uh, and uh, the Sadhu, they go to the Vedic school in Varanasi. And they know about us and they allow us to enter and uh, to meet the boy with another, with a student. They, speak to, they spoke together. We didn't know Orissa language. We didn't know anything what they are saying each to other. This, is, uh, this was a dialogue that uh, was uh, long, I don't know, 40 minutes, maybe more. And they, um, they said so much things, so many things that we didn't understand and uh, we understood after in Italy. Now, uh, was this scenes that we actually see in the film? Yes. Okay, so you're filming the whole 40 minutes. Absolutely, yes. It's very rare to catch this reality. This is reality, not the reality of TV. This is reality. And that moment, that particular moment, it was impossible for us to force a boy from Orissa to have a dialogue about something like this. It's, it is impossible. Who knows this place? Who knows this reality? No, that is impossible. But this is a moment also for the other person, the student, to say something that was the first time he, he said to someone else. So if you saw this scene, you understand that uh, the, uh, the, the, that we cannot change so much also, if we wanted, and we didn't want to change the reality of the, the situation. But anyway, there is a balance. So, you can have so, you, so it was just some enabling to, keep, yes. to enable them to take the trip to Calcutta. Yes. Or, for example, were there any other moments where you enabled them? Uh, for example, to go to Amarkantak. Amarkanta, it was a long journey that we made together with the sadhu and the boy. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe it could happen anyway, but it could take one year, <laughs> ten years, I don't know. To walk there or something, oh, yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. 
So, and were there any any scenes that you um, had them redo for the camera? Okay, big question. I don't like, of course, I don't want to remake the scenes. Right. Because it, it means that you manage anything too much. But you have, I, I think that uh, very often we speak about photography, mm -hmm. beautiful photography, no? But the first aspect of the photography, the first element of the photography, after, of course, what the environment you, where you are, the people that you are shooting, the situation, okay, is the organization of the scene. Like in a movie, you have to shoot something. It's not a matter only of where I put the camera, here, no. You have to organize the scene to choose the right place to move, to let that the situation go in the right direction. It's, it's not easy because you can do in a, say, a movie, you can do everything, you know? The best is the cartoon. The cartoon, you imagine at things. All, yeah, yes, mind. at all, right. but uh, uh, completely. The movie, just few less, and the documentary, less. But you have to organize the situation. But to remake, it means that it's a fiction. Hmm. At, at, the end, at the end of the movie, the boy makes a choice. Yes. Uh, he, he's tested a couple of, I don't want to spoil the movie for everyone, but he, he goes through a couple of different options for his life. And at the end, he makes a choice. And then why, what is this choice? And why does he make this particular choice? Because he wanted to do something different. Okay, right? yes. You are right. <clears throat> his desire before was to dance. Uh, in, during these two months, he realized, he understood that uh, the life outside the village <laughs> was very different. Because when you live in uh, a particular uh, cultural uh, little society like uh, at the village, uh, this is a sort of a little republic, uh, you can understand well the world around. It, it was the first time that he go he went uh, out of the village, okay, he arrived at the big towns, it was the first time. He was fascinated by the sadhu world. We have to understand that uh, to be a sadhu could mean to change your life also in better. In India, there are Brahmins, that is uh, a casta, so you born from a Brahmin, you are a Brahmin, uh, you will have a son, Brahmin, mm -hmm. and this a priest. The sadhu is a, um, something you choose to be. So you try to become sadhu, you find the sadhu that is, uh, will be your guru, you uh, uh, become a chela, kela, chela, the disciple of the sadhu, and you try to become. And it is possible not only for some casta particular like Brahmin. It is possible for everybody. It could be possible also for uh, out of casta. Uh -huh. The last. So it's a kind of social equalizer. Yes, they say so. I don't know if it's completely well, if you, if you true. you come from a lower caste, yes. then you can, everyone can become. It's the one thing everyone can become. Yes. regardless of their status, right? Yes, this is what they said as the sadhus. So you are what you are and you can become a sadhu. Uh, it was shocking for the boy that uh, didn't see so many sadhus in his life inside the village, because inside the village there is an organization, the chief of the village, the priest, the Brahmin that, uh, that sometimes is the owner of the temple. So, to become a sadhu, it is possible, really. What does it mean? I can go everywhere I, I want, I can have a sort of brotherhood, no? Mm -hmm. Okay. And For him it was a kind of a liberating, uh, 
to be born in a village where there's not even electricity, just a little bit of television, yeah. and then to see a world outside and make yes. that choice to be to be liberated from the village life. Exactly. So, uh, living, staying with <coughs> this, the, the sadhu of the film, he was fascinated about this kind of life. And he wanted to try, just to try. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the end of the film, he was convinced that, yes, I will do. The day after you decide you have to cut your hair, just one time in your life, or two times. Uh, and uh, it was hard for him to imagine to cut the air again, because the air were, were cut the first time that he, when he arrived to the village. Uh -huh. So this is just the second time in his life. And the choice or the... Uh, there was one character in the movie, it was the, the Sadhu, yeah. who is obviously from born in a Western yes. country, which was a little unusual. Yes. And I was curious why, uh, how did this happen? Yes. Why, did, why this character? Why not a, an Indian? Yes, yes. And uh, it happened. Sometimes in India, they say that in India it's impossible to do simple things. Mm -hmm. And it's simple to do in very difficult things, impossible things. And uh, in, the, in the middle of the Kumbh Mela, of Allahabad, of that year, between millions of people, we met uh, Shivadas, the, the sadhu that lives there, in, may, mainly in Varanasi. And uh, we met him and uh, we discussed of many things and the boy uh, was we, with here with us, with uh, me, with Jambu, and, uh, and, the, and so the situation went alone. Uh, it happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, the boy started, uh, at first he only watched to the sadhu and hear, heard. And after that he started to make uh, questions about the life, uh, about uh, how to how to live, uh, how to earn something uh, to live, and he was fascinated mm -hmm. because uh, that particular sadhu is a fascinating person. Okay, okay. Can we talk about just the technical aspects? So, how many cameras did you use? Yeah. How many for someone watching the film or a filmmaker? Wh what what kind of cameras did you use? How did you do the, the process, the post processing, color that kind of? Okay. Sound. Yes. Really uh, technical equipment is a key point to shoot uh, documentary because uh, the problem is every time the same, the money. The money, uh, to have more or less money uh, is crucial for uh, realization of the film, also uh, for the number of persons that are with you. Uh, usually we shoot a documentary going in two person. Mm -hmm. mm. okay. But the two filmmakers or two camera people? Usually we are one, one director and cameraman. Okay. Just two for, for money problems. And uh, in that particular situation uh, we were four people. Okay. Yes. Uh, me as director, producer, and uh, Marco Leopardi as photographer, Marco Pasquini, second camera and sound, and Roberta with me uh, to organize the situation and for writing. Mm -hmm. uh, we, every, every evening in the hut, uh, we <coughs> wrote everything, what's happened during the day, and uh, how it uh, can work uh, inside the story, uh, is there something that we are have to look for to enrich the story? What can happen tomorrow? Let's prepare a plan for tomorrow, a B plan for tomorrow, a C plan for the next week. Okay, about the technical equipment. Uh, uh, this documentary was shot some years ago. And uh, in that period, we had a very heavy 
shoulder camera, B camera, a Panasonic HD. Uh, it's uh, one of the last documentary we made with video cassette, oh, okay. HD video cassette. <coughs> so heavy, heavy. Heavy equipment. Uh, what, what, what year is this that you're filming this? Sorry? What year what, were you filming? The, the first shoot was uh, in 2007. Okay, 10 years ago. 10 years ago. Wow. Yes. And um, so heavy equipment. We carried with us, with the sacrifice, a lot of uh, material uh, or equipment. For example, a box only for a good monitor with specific batteries and so on. And the second, so the first camera was three CCDs. Okay. Yes, the technology of that era, at that age, um, with the <coughs> wide angle, zoom wide angle, and the normal zoom. And the second camera was uh, a Sony uh, uh, Zeta, uh, Zeta One. And uh, we shoot mainly with, the, of course, with the big cameras. And uh, I don't know, now there are other good options, of course. Were you using a boom mic, or how did you do with the sound? Okay, the sound is a key point. Because uh, today, it seems to be not so important, the quality of the pictures. Uh, very often, we see something very scattered, uh, everything. Uh, the focus said, I don't know, but the sound is a key point. We need a good sound. Marco Pasquini, my colleague, uh, made his best to put a small microphone okay. here, a hidden a microphone. A microphone underneath? Yes. With a wireless? Or yes, wireless, of course. Two uh, radio microphones and a boom. Because that camera has a, a good a possibility to, uh, for the audio uh, that is not available, for example, in the new uh, Super 35 cameras that are, ha they have only two channels. Mm -hmm. On the contrary, that camera had four true channels. Mm -hmm. So two channels were, uh, well, one channel was reserved to the boom mm -hmm. or the boom put onto the camera. And the other three uh, were used to, for three different microphones, okay. yeah. cordless. Uh, it's not easy to manage this. Marco is not a, a sound, sound man. Uh, he's a, a video maker and also a cameraman too, but uh, he was part of the project and uh, helped us for everything. But uh, I think that he made uh, incredible sound. Also because uh, you have to consider that India is a country full of yeah, noises. Yeah, the horns, the car horns, just maddening. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the story, how did the story come about? When did you start? <laughs> um, what was the production process? You know, we talked earlier this morning about the, yes. the sales process and when did you kind of say, okay, we're finished with it. How, what was that timeline? Okay. Okay, every story, uh, every documentary is, has a particular story about the developing production side and uh, the story, the real story inside, on the other side. Uh, let's speak about the story, the script. Okay. 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 We already no, uh, we did already know that uh, the reality of Gutipua in India, because a uh, few years before to shoot, uh, we made a series. Um, I don't remember the, <laughs> the title of the series, but uh, we we made a series about child living in particular religion mm -hmm. environments. Mm -hmm. The Sacred Child was the series. So uh, I sent uh, Marco there to shoot the Gotipua without to know anything, just few. Marco went there and shoot a, a short, a half an hour documentary about Gotipua. After that, 
we knew more or less everything about the Cotipua. Uh, Cotipua is not well known, they are completely disappearing, uh, so we know that the situation uh, is changing and uh, we have few time to do a complete work about this topic. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and there we have uh, a friend of mine, an Indian photographer, Pravash Das, that helped us in every, in each documentary we made there. And uh, he was uh, checking the situation of the village um, regularly mm -hmm. in contact with the chief of the Gotipua, the chief of the village and so on. And uh, I wanted to do a story, the story about the particular moment in which there is a good boy that wanted to do something different from there. And uh, I asked it to inform me when it ah, was right. possible. So this was the right moment about the production, about the development. Before to produce, because we have to say that if you want to make documentary, you must uh, have a budget on board. You have to be sure that when you finish the film, you sell it. You have to pre-sell the documentary, absolutely. You have to cover at least the expenses. Expenses means maybe not your uh, money, but uh, the, the people. Salary, but at least your costs, right? Eh? Not the salaries, but the, at least all your travel costs. Travel and, and, and salary of the people. Right. Please, uh, yeah. <laughs> at least the people, <laughs> let's pay the people. Okay, you have on board uh, enough money to pay the person, the people, the, the crew, the, uh, the travels, and so on. So you had the idea, or when you said, okay, we'll make this film, that's day one. How, how many days or months until you finished everything, post-production? Okay, it depends, of course, uh, uh, it depends by who will at, at the end pay for this film. So you have to develop the project, uh, trying to find the money in, in every manner, and uh, there, there, will be, uh, the, there will be limits to that for the time to realize it uh, uh, related to the, to, the, to the TV channel right. that want it uh, between uh, in this window of, of time we, so you have six months one year mm -hmm. I don't know um, the story of the financing of this film uh, was quite sad because at the beginning it seemed that we have everything we have a, I think a good media fund from Europe a private financer that entered putting only money in change of money for the sales after and a big channel. The big channel renounced to the film just one month before we, we go in India. Uh, the private uh, investor, uh, yes, remained, uh, but uh, you have to give uh, the money increased, right. uh -huh. okay, yeah. return, and uh, we remained uh, at first only with the public fund. This is a story of many documentaries. You, now, if you want to, to do a one-off with uh, some good budget, you, you need absolutely to have different uh, means, different uh, uh, Sources countries, of sources of funding, okay. And so we started uh, to shoot because uh, the, the story was ready, we have everything, uh, per permission, visas, and so on. Uh, after the realization of the film, we sold after to Rai Television, the public broadcaster of Italy, and we sold two different versions of the film that are completely different for different slots, and uh, to Arte, mm -hmm. Arte France, uh, that both the documentary, and some other little 
sales. So we balance the, ban the, the budget. When I watched the film and I saw some of the other projects that you've worked on, mm -hmm. it seems like uh, religion, in particular, very devoted uh, religious directions. The, the Satus in India, or you also had did a film, worked on a film about um, Mennonites, a yeah. uh, very um, extreme form of um, uh, Christianity. And then you also have, you had another film also about this uh, young person moving into adulthood, I think it was called... Uh, Walking in the Right Path. Uh, right, the Right Via, right? Uh, yes. Are the, what, what interests you about these topics? Is there something that, that comes from yourself that you're trying to explore or are you trying to express something? And where's the uh, common thread for your, yourself? Okay. Why we do, why we make documentary? First of all, is uh, an expression of yourself. You want to say something to people. You want to share something of people, like a writer, maybe like a, also a painter. Uh, the focus could be more on yourself or on a reality, or both. Um, Okay, of course we are more sensitive to some arguments, uh, something, for example, the young, uh, the boys, uh, yes, the religion, uh, but it is not necessary. You want to say something, you want to in investigate also. For me, in my opinion, the investigation in general is uh, the first reason uh, that uh, uh, push you to do a documentary. I, you want, first of all, to know. You have to be curious, I think. Curiosity, for me, is the first um, element of the research, and after that, to realize something. If we speak, for example, uh, uh, on the other side about human rights, let's speak about human rights you need to say something and could be related to your personal life or to the life of other person. You want to help them. We go, we go more far from here and we arrive, for example, in the history documentary. History is there, is in the past. Who is interested? No. It's possible that you want to tell the story that is related in an history uh, matter in different way. Uh, for example, I uh, made a documentary about uh, Juan Perón, mm -hmm. the, pre the third, three times president of Argentina. Mm -hmm. And uh, his history uh, related to where he was born, uh, where and when and so on his life. Uh, it was to investigate, uh, to discover why he uh, hide uh, his real place when he was born, where, from who he was really, his family. And so you can understand that you can watch the history in different way. You want to see we documentaries want to see something in particular. We want to enter in some topic, some argument in deep and uh, to reveal and uh, to share it. And, or and for you personally, because you've been doing this, uh, I mean, in the 80s you started as a cameraman, right? Yeah. Now you have the chance to choose your topics. What is it that you feel that you, that you what are you trying to communicate to the audience? Or you just are you, are you exploring and going where you're interested and then showing like and explore what you hmm. found? Uh, maybe, maybe I am attracted by different situations, different things, different genres. I don't want to uh, to do all my life the same. And uh, sometimes I, for example, in this story. I was really fascinated by the story of this boy. 
I, I knew it and I want to tell to the world. Uh, each documentary has a particular story. The Last Dance is a cultural, religious um, topic that uh, is incredible to see, to understand, to know, and it is disappearing. So I think we must shoot it. We must make a memory uh, of this situation because it is disappearing. For me, is a must to do. I don't know how to say. And there is the mean to do it. For me, in my opinion, it's better to, sh uh, to shoot the story of one of them instead of make a general documentary, an anthropological, ethnographic documentary mm -hmm. with the narrator that explains very well everything and so on. So... To, to personalize it to a, a person's story to make it yeah, more real. Uh, I like, of course, personal story. Mm -hmm. But Gotipua and Biswajit are the same. Gotipua is a sort of body and uh, we can write the, the story of this body, cultural body, and Biswajit is a person, is, uh, inside him there is a universe, you can see inside the film how it is possible for a boy to change opinion, to change the life, uh, to hope something, to love something, and so on. We are in search for universe. Universe are uh, inside the village, inside the person, or is a, a landscape of a situation in which there are a lot of characters that interact between them. Mm -hmm. So in each story, in each documentary, I look for something. But I think that the investigation is the first element. You want to know something. And uh, so the curiosity is is the, is the first element. And the second one is the empathy. Mm -hmm. I enter in empathy with everybody and uh, it's part of my character, of my, myself, and uh, I want to tell the story of the person. I like, I love, and I want to share mm -hmm. it. Well, thank you very much for the conversation and thank you for your film. Did I forget something that's important? Yes, there is something that is important. Uh, the important thing is that, yes, we made this, but we need the, the people watch. And uh, I think that uh, for this kind of story, like The Last Dance, but also other documentaries, uh, we need that uh, the people see, the people watch, and the mainly uh, the young. Mm -hmm. I am convinced, that I think that documentary is a, a good way to educate, or not only divulgate, but also educate. And uh, when we have the chance to show our documentary to, for example, a classroom of children, uh, we saw that they are really interested. Indeed, they, they don't see any more documentaries. Mm -hmm. They have other time to spend the time. But if we have the chance to show them, they are fascinated. I think that uh, they understand more to the world that is outside of them. Thank you. Thank you.